Again, DO 200B, excerpts from a Fusion's two-day training. First, let me give you a little bit of a brief background on a Fusion. At the 50,000 foot view, well, a Fusion focuses on DO 200 data, and we have great people to do audit, certification, training, and all the related activities. DO 200 is the set of minimum standards and guidance for processing aeronautical data. It's usually associated with a database. So aeronautical data is data that's used for navigation. It's used for flight planning. It's used for terrain awareness, flight simulators. It comprises the navigation-related data, including terrain and obstacles. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the evolution. As you know, in aviation, the ecosystem is always expanding. So what are the criteria for developing, changing, supporting aeronautical data? Now, aeronautical data, as we'll see, is all data associated with aircraft safety, not just data on board the aircraft, but also on the ground, CNS ATM, communication navigation systems, air traffic management, DO-278. Ultimately, it provides a user with an assurance of data integrity. Now, in Europe, remember, DO is document. That's North American. In Europe, our European friends call it European document, ED-76. Same document, same data. Now, DO-200 scope and focus is about originating the data and assuring that the source is valid. But that's not DO-200. Sorry for the little earthquake here. This is California and things shake a lot. So aeronautical data origination is outside the scope of DO-200. DO-200 is about the data flow after the originator, how we receive and distribute data. That's the transmission. It's how we prepare the data, including how we assemble it from the originator, translate. We select which data we're going to use and the format of that data. Then we consider how the data will be used. What's the application? How do we integrate with that? And again, assembly, translation, selection, format. And then we have an end user. Now, the shaded portion here, the dark gray, this is DO200B. The origination and end use is external. We'll talk about that. So remember, DO200 is guidance, okay? They're recommended standards. They're not strict requirements. There's a little subjectivity that we'll try to reduce, remove that subjectivity here within our training. DO200 is developed by committee. That means it's all things to all people. It applies to large data sets, small data sets. It applies to different data assurance levels. and we have different criticality levels associated with data. We'll see that there's three assurance levels, different criticality. So DO200 is more concerned with a provable quality system rather than the process steps. What does that mean? Well, let's summarize. DO200B is the third version. Remember, DO200 was the first version. 200A up until a few years ago was the second version, and today it's DO200B, third version. Standards for processing aeronautical data, not originating, originating, I mean, not applying, was first developed 32 years ago. Then it was changed by a special committee and then changed again just five years ago. Now, the committee was mostly industry with some government people. There's many compromises to satisfy the different goals of data users. It's not a recipe book or an exact how-to guide to make data. It's a discussion flow for consistent, accurate, provable quality data creation, changes, processing, assessing, and transmitting. So it's a discussion flow that is able to accommodate many different development data types. 
But in practice, it really is the golden rule for aeronautical data. Now, some differences with the previous version, and if you're being audited by EASA, FAA, or a military entity, and a Fusion works with 15 of those, so we have many years of audit experience, key on these differences, folks, the differences between 200A and 200B, because this is what you'll be audited on. There's an expanded scope for aeronautical data. It's not just navigation data. It also applies DO-330. Remember DO-178, 278? Yeah, airborne ground-based data, hardware 254. Well, tools are software programs that are used to develop, verify, assess data. So obviously, data generation, data processing, data transmission uses these software tools. Do we trust these tools? Well, in aviation, who do we trust? No one. So if we want to trust a tool, we must qualify it. If we don't qualify the tool, then we will review every instance of every output. So DO330 for tool qualification is very important. We'll talk about that. DO200 clarifies which special documents are used to augment DO200B certification. 200B clarifies processes versus phases and functions. We'll talk about that. It's mandatory that a data processor has a QMS, quality management system, but also a safety process. That safety process is used to assess the assurance level of the data and the DQRs, data quality requirements. There's more rigor in DO200B for tool qualification, and it invokes DO330, and more rigid objectives and detailed data quality requirements, DQRs. So DO200B, remember, we generally copy the format of the other DOs, DO1, 278, 278, et cetera. We start with purpose scope, the requirements, compliance, then we have a, appendices. It's mostly appendices. There's a glossary. We'll summarize the keywords here in our quick one-hour tutorial today. How to define the DQRs, data quality requirements. How to comply with the DP, data processing requirements. How to consider tool qualification. Will you trust the tool? Well, only if you qualify it or you review that tool's output. And then how do you comply? And what are the compliance matrix items? How do we get a LOA, letter of approval? So let's summarize some definitions. Now, this is a busy one-hour tutorial. Hopefully, we'll have a minute or some questions at the end, but just a couple minutes. Aeronautical data is data that's used for an aeronautical application. Could be on the ground, could be in the air. Navigation, flight planning, simulators, terrain awareness, all of these things utilize data, navigation and terrain. An aeronautical database is a collection of electronically stored aeronautical data. Generally, aeronautical databases are updated at a regular interval. Typically, we use the four week, four times seven, 28 days ICAO interval. Assembly is the process of merging or compiling aeronautical data, usually from different data suppliers. And how do we establish a baseline for subsequent processing? That assembly phase includes checking the data, ensuring that errors and omissions are corrected. The assurance level is the degree of confidence that a data element is not corrupted while it's stored or in transit. So this can be categorized into three levels, one, two, and three. One is the highest level, okay? Think level A or assurance level one on the ground, right? The bigger number, three, is less rigor, right? Three is the lowest. Now, correct data means the data meets the stated quality requirements. Data quality is a degree or level of confidence that the data provided meets the requirements of the user, okay? Those requirements include accuracy, resolution, assurance level, traceability, timeliness, all of those key attributes. Then we have errors. These are defective or degraded data elements that are lost or misplaced data. 
okay? Or a data element that doesn't meet its strict DQR, data quality requirements. Now the originator is the first organization in the aeronautical data chain. Remember, it's a chain, a link of originator, receiver, transmitter, receiver, transmitter. Multiple entities touch, process, transmit that data. Now, what are some example applications for data? An avionics maker receives aero data from some data service provider. That avionics maker loads that data into its ground-based processing software. That software runs automated checks on the data, probably customizes the geographic data area, the data content. Then it compresses or packages that data by changing the format into that which is specified for the target flight management system, for example, or terrain avoidance system. We create a navig navigation data file or a set of files for each customer. Then we transmit or send that data to the customer. If we send it electronically, that customer has the means to then transfer that data onto the avionics system. Then we load the aeronautical data. That's one example. So there you see we have originators, processes, multiple reformatting, then transmission all the way to an end user. The end user is DO-278 if on the ground, DO-178-254 if airborne. The originator is outside the scope of 254. Government originators don't come under 254 themselves until they transmit, okay? Then they are processors. So DO-200B has assurance. What is assurance? Well, it's associated with the assurance level. It's the degree of confidence that a data element is not corrupted while stored or in transit, while it's processed. There's three levels of insurance. One is the highest, three is the lowest. We determine the level by a safety process that considers the effects of incorrect or corrupted data. It was incorrect. What would be the worst case implication? Well, data integrity for aeronautical data is the degree of assurance that an aeronautical data and its value hasn't been lost or altered since origination. So we can trust the primary initial origination, but not after, okay? So DO200Bs, the central tenet or philosophy strategy, is assuring sufficient data integrity, not perfect. Perfection is impossible. Remember FAA EASA, the probability of error is one, 100% errors happen. The question is, what's the implication of that error? Can we minimize it to an acceptable level? That's the data process assurance level. So there's some unique aspects we have with DO200B. Usually, in contrast to avionic systems, which are 178 for software, 254 for hardware, Data is usually independent of a particular aircraft type design. There's frequent updates. We do not update avionics software frequently. When we update avionics software or hardware, we invoke a probable major change and a recertification effort. But with data, in many cases, it's frequently updated, maybe every four weeks. So usually the avionics maker and the data user are not the original data originator, okay? The data originators are worldwide, often country by country, plus there's different government entities for satellite mapping, weather, terrain mapping, military applications. Now, some keynotes on DO200B. This aeronautical data is increasingly important. Many of you saw the news last week, a big manufacturer, of avionics data processing flight planning was hacked. Malware, okay. There's cybersecurity rules, that's DO326. Go to the Effusion website, download a free paper on that if you want more information. But the data processing was hacked, which affected pilots, airlines, and air crews' ability to create flight plans, dispatch aircraft, okay. So increasingly in this intranet of things, this interconnected world we have, the data 
is the value, the differentiator. So the data is clearly becoming more important. Hence the emphasis of DO200B and cybersecurity. So we need to make sure that that data used in aviation, ground, air, processing, dispatch, is produced reliably. So we have to ensure that the source data is still intact after we've received, changed it, processed it, filtered, added to it, subtracted to it. Have we introduced any errors? Can we recreate the exact same data? Can I notify the originator of any errors and notify the receiver along the chain if I make changes or I find errors? So we have this ecosystem of standards. Here we are today talking about the purple, DO200B, how we prepare data, receive, assemble, translate, select, format, distribute. But remember, this is part of an ecosystem, DO201 or ED77 in Europe. Rules for data accuracy, the resolution, criticality, calculation, what are the procedures for origination? Then us, DO200B, and then airborne, okay? Software, processes, tool qualification. There's also hardware there these days, DO254, and we have in use, yellow, airworthiness operational requirements. Our focus is DO200B. Let's look at the next slide, slide 18. This is a larger representation that a fusion uses with our audits and our training mentoring to show where DO200B fits in. In aviation, we've got a safety assessment at the aircraft level, okay? The ground-based system level, CNS ATM, air traffic control communications. That determines the architecture of our systems, criticality levels, or development assurance level, DAL as we call it. Then there's a aircraft and system development process, ARP 4754. If you want more information on these, just go to our website, download free papers. And then we define the airborne software, airborne hardware, but data is external, okay? DO200B data is prepared on the ground, used on the ground, used in the air. So what really is DO200B? Well, the big picture. It's a method and hazard description for process development and enforcement. Can you show that on your worst day, your minimum processes are actually followed, and when those minimum processes, which are always followed and defined, prove that they're applied on your worst day? So it's data source driven. 200B provides guidelines, limits on how much we can extrapolate data how we can project that data, how we move between different source types from originator, reprocessors, and transmission. Make sure we have a language with this, which is common and accurate, okay? So DO200B describes this chain of data custody. You cannot break the chain. You prove that even your new person who just starts this morning has defined written processes that are no less sufficient than your most senior person because data always changes, people change. So we must have a pipeline and define it of how that data flows from originator to the end user. It's a machine for how we perform data processing. So 200B ensures that source data is not degraded when we process it. We ensure that the databases are compatible with the end equipment. We make sure the databases are updated, they're current, they're valid, and it covers DO200B the entire life cycle from the origination of data all the way to acceptance and application by the end user, okay? Now, let's consider data sources. Data is the differentiator. Data is growing exponentially in aviation. We have authoritative sources and non-authoritative, okay? So authoritative source is an individual state, a country. Your countries, all of you are in countries right now. I don't think anyone is homeless on a cruise ship in the middle of the ocean. So you also have a designee from a state, perhaps a military entity, a weather agency. 
Those are authoritative. That means you can trust them. But then you have additional, always do, non-authoritative sources. They're not officially associated with an individual state. So the first user from a non-authoritative source must perform that additional validation. Remember, validation. Are the requirements correct, complete, feasible, unambiguous? Verification. Have you met the requirements? So first, we validate. Then we consider that the DQRs, the data quality requirements, they come from aerodrome mapping information, DO272, DO276, user requirements for terrain optical data. So DO200B has key sections. Section one tells us how we use it, what documents we need and apply, and it explains high level. Then section two is about the requirements, okay? How we perform quality assurance, data processing, data management. Section three is the methods that we use, how we ensure compliance, how we perform audits. And then we have the appendices, glossary, guidance requirements, and methods for guidance. Then, Let's consider the required documents of DO200, okay? You need a compliance plan that shows how your entity, your group, your company complies with DO200. Then you have a DQR document. What are the data quality requirements that you're expected to meet? Then what data processing do you do? What are your data processing procedures. Then you use tools in that data processing. Which tools will be assessed? Which tools do you trust because you review everything? Which tools will you qualify? And then configuration management documents. How do you know what you developed 30 years prior? Can you reassess, re-verify, rebuild that data up to 30 years, our general aviation 30 year rule? And then competencies. How do you ensure that the individual people associated with all steps of your data processing change are competent? And then what is your QMS, quality management system? Perhaps it's AS9115A, ISO, IEEE, okay? You also need the compliance reports. These follow advisory circular 153. Now, the compliance plan. Your goal here, keep it short, sweet, 40, 50 pages. Identify, reference these six key areas. Define your data quality requirements, okay? Or reference how you'll do that. Then define your aeronautical data processing requirements, high level. Then define your quality management requirements. Then number four, identify which personnel in your organization are responsible for complying with those requirements, declare what standards you use, and then show a compliance matrix, which of course will be completed when you're approved. So let's consider slide 26. And again, this is a high level one hour summary of a Fusion's two day training. So we're just touching the top level. If you want private training, just let us know. DQR comes first. You must define the data quality requirements. Then and only then, after you've defined them, validated, documented review, then you define the data processing and perform that data processing. In the background, you have a continuous process of quality management based upon your QMS, quality management system. One, two, background three. Now, remember DO178. I see a few of the attendees today. Oh, it looks like 60 or 80 of you, a small percentage, but you're hardcore avionics software people. That means you're familiar with DO178. 178 has something similar. 178 has the planning process. It occurs first, right? 178, five plans. Then you have a development process that looks like the waterfall, but you follow the V model or uh, modified safe agile. It's requirements, design, coding, integration. 
and then the correctness process of CM, QA, verification, tests, reviews, analysis. It's similar, right? This is 178C. This is DO200. Notice the similarity? Exactly. We cut and paste, copy, repurpose, re-leverage the DO documents. So who copied who? Well, DO200 came after 178. 200 is larger, a few years later, okay, eight years later. DQRs come first. You must define the requirements. Then you have data processing. Then you have quality management, which is continuous. So now let's look at the details of DO200B, the 10,000 foot view. Okay, by the way, do you like that map? Every pixel, line, object, figure, is defined by data requirements. Data processing, data quality, some is important. The colors of a boundary, less important. The height of a mountain, the approach, terrain, navigation frequencies, these are important. So DO200B has six what we call key embedded or integral processes. Number one, planning for data processing. Number two, defining data quality requirements. Number three, the actual data processing itself. Number four, the data quality management. Number five, how you assure compliance. And then finally, and hopefully, number six, especially for civil, you need that EASA FAA Certification Authority, LOA, Letter of Acceptance. Okay, now, Data processing, number one, you have to plan for it. Look around your room that right now. You're in a house, maybe you're driving in your car. I hope you're not actually behind the steering wheel. You're in a commercial building. Whatever you're in, that entity had building plans that were approved before it was built. Then independent people assess those plans. Does this building, car, house meet the requirements? We need the same thing for aeronautical data. What are my defined plans that will provide proof that I can reliably produce data and I've introduced no errors, okay? Hopefully I find errors from previous originators, but we'll talk about that. So let's look at data processing first, it's key. So ensuring data to be used within aviation has been produced in a reliable manner. Ensuring that the processing of the source data has not introduced any errors, okay? So hopefully you find, detect, and report back any errors in the data which you received, but your focus is on ensuring at a minimum you don't introduce additional errors. So the next step, and we'll go a little more detail on these in a few minutes. After we've defined our data processing planning, now let's define the data quality requirements. That's the technical, accessible, verifiable quality characteristics of the data and the granularity, okay? How accurate is that data? Meters, centimeters, millimeters, right? For aviation, miles, feet. We don't use inches. Let's look. DQRs. Now, this is just an overview, really quick. If you want more details, you can download the Fusion DO200B uh, white paper on our website. It's free. So, defining data quality requirements. You consider the data's intended usage. Those characteristics of the data need to be recorded. Those characteristics of the data, they help generate the DQRs for accuracy. The resolution, the assurance level, one, most important, two, medium importance, three, important, but less important. Traceability between the DQRs and validation verification. The timeliness of the data, okay? The completeness of the data and the actual format. So the next process, number three, is the data processing itself. Data processing defines a procedural framework. What tools, what processes, what are the responsibilities of individuals? 
what could a new person who starts today read and follow and be assessed upon to know if they did their job sufficiently? What is the chain of your data? Where does it come from? Where does it go? So data processing is required. You have to define it. It includes any processing of the data you receive or transmit. What does the word framework really mean? Well, it's written processes that cover the entire life cycle. If it's verbal, it doesn't count. It's like real estate law, okay? In many forms of law, verbal promises are a commitment. Not in aviation, not in real estate. It's gotta be written down. So what have you written down? Is there sufficient detail to ensure deterministic, that means same result each time, consistency when you rebuild, reformat, change and transmit the data? How can you audit the data objectively? That means two different auditors or verifiers, reviewers, would achieve the same sufficient, insufficient, pass, fail determination. So it includes checks of the inputs and outputs of your chain. That's what we mean by framework. So that aeronautical chain, simplified, boy, can you hear that siren in the background? Yeah, that's what happens when we don't follow the rules. The people with the sirens come and get us. Well, not really, they don't have sirens but they will find us hopefully. So we have an OEM, original equipment manufacturer, maybe an applicant for a particular aircraft type. They're gonna get a design approval, a type certificate or supplemental type certificate. Maybe they'll obtain the, the TSO, follow the TSO. So we have an AIP, it's a, it's a state, it's an originator of data, okay? They provide data to different data providers. Maybe there's a chain here. So the data provider has to know their requirements. What are they expecting? Does the provider meet the DQRs? And then the avionics manufacturer, okay? Or the CNS ATM, the enders of the world, the TALUS, the people who make communication navigation systems, air traffic management, the Iridium satellites, yeah, ADSB on board, right? So everybody has DQRs data that they're assessed. At the end, we have the operator, the end user, the airline. So data processes, what is that formal framework? Well, it's a defined set of activities, processes, instructions that ensure that aeronautical data chain integrity is maintained during any data processing performed. It defines a written process to ensure we have proper activities including security. Now security was added for DO 200B, but remember 200B was written before the cybersecurity guidelines of DO 326, yeah, 35, all the cybersecurity DOs were written. So it's a little high level. Data processes also are meant to provide a critical understanding of the need for any procedural framework you might have, okay? that would be used to prove effectiveness and maintainability of the data. So now let's summarize the quality management process. So the goal is to assess independently, do I have a procedural framework that complies with a formal quality management system? So what is data quality management? It's an ability to assess implementation versus plan. You ask yourself a question. Can you prove, remember, in your countries, all the dozens of countries you're tuned into this broadcast for, the basic law, I hope, I think, is innocent until proven guilty. But in aviation, it's the opposite. You're guilty until you prove your innocence. I am guilt. We're all guilty until we prove our innocence. It's incumbent upon us. Can you prove by showing that my written processes comply with DO 200 and I independently validated those processes and verified that I met them? So it's the ability to assess the planned work versus the written framework. Can I review? Do I have checklists? Can they be applied consistently? 
In aviation, everything has a checklist. What's the processes that I use to revise or change update procedures if I need to prove compliance? What are the audit checklists? Okay, checklists are your receipt. No receipt, no expense account. Okay, so what are the checklists that will be applied? Can you prove you're innocent? Now look, for those of you who are cognizant of the Software Engineering Institute, Carnegie Mellon model, remember? Yeah, capability, maturity model, integrated. So it's very similar to level three, level four, or almost equivalent to level C and 178C. It follows the International Standards Organization 9001, ISO 9X, according to the QMS, Quality Management System. So now, what is quality assurance? Everyone thinks they know. If you ask nine engineers, we find at a fusion that we usually get 10 or 11 different answers. So let's use the official definition of quality assurance, not the Microsoft, Intel, Facebook definition, okay? Quality assurance for us in aviation is the degree to which a system component process meets specified requirements. It's the ability of a product, service, system, component, something to provably meet customer needs, expectations, and those requirements. It's the totality of the characteristics to meet an implied or stated need. And ultimately, it answers the question. Can I prove that I conform to user expectations? Here we're talking about data. User requirements, data quality requirements, how I'll use that data. Will the customer, the receiver of that data, be satisfied? Is it reliable? And what are the permissible level of defects? Well, quality management then is the art and science, left brain, right brain, right? of institutionalizing, ensuring consistency. We're only as strong as the weakest person in an organization. When we look at aviation accidents, they originate from the ground, from design, from operators, flight crew, pilots. Okay, when we do root cause analysis, we want to establish what really happened. We find that it's usually a small mistake that wasn't caught that grew an impact. So we're trying to avoid that by having an acceptable level of double checks. So what are those quality practices that we employ to establish goals and continually assess and improve because software, hardware, aeronautical data in aviation continually change. So finally, quality management is the implementation of formally defined written processes with training, so all new QA people, engineering, data processors, they follow the minimum standards. So in aviation, QA has two basic tasks. Number one, the foundation. Ensure that your products or your projects, pardon me, plans, standards, checklists, they comply with DO200B. So QA approves the plans and checklists. Then QA assesses engineers, data processes, data checkers, tools. Did you follow, can you prove you followed the plans, standards, and checklists, okay? So you've got those two activities. Which one's more important? Yeah, they both are. So now, if we consider the impact of QA, let's see what that actually means on a day-to-day -day basis. QA approves three categories of artifacts. The plans, the standards, which convert subjective criteria into objective meeting of the plans, and then checklists to show we met the standards and the plans. So QA approves these three categories, and by having QA approve them, we know that QA is educated enough to assess them. QA doesn't have to actually write the three plans, standards, checklist, categories. They approve them. So engineers, they create, they verify. Verification is review, test, analyze. Then QA, they approve the plan, standards, checklists, and assess the engineers. Did you 
follow the creation verification rules, can you prove it accordingly? Now, the quality management system has a document hierarchy. We start with industry standards, okay? That includes, yeah, DO 200. We're here today, DO 201. Then also our next, our quality processes, policies, the instructions that we use within our data processing organization to meet those standards. And then finally, the specific written plans and project-specific processes and instructions that we use to show compliance. So some tips. Make sure your QMS is conformant to one of the major standards, AS9115, ISO 9X. Make sure you have your quality management procedure requirements. You have control requirements, review requirements, document control requirements. Make sure you keep records with metrics, show when you have defects, show the processes where you record, find those defects, improve, fix those defects. And then how, number six, you institute formal management reviews and what are the requirements for notifying management, having management involved, okay? So these are the six basic categories of activities that your QMS system, quality management system, needs to provably cover. Okay. So now you've done your data processing planning. You've defined your data quality requirements. You can assess what you receive, what you'll transmit. You process the data according to the written documents. You have a quality management process and system that guarantees you meet that with proof. Now, number five, the big red one, page 48. How do you ensure compliance? Well, this is with audits. And remember, audits are not reviews. They are, but not really. They're subset reviews, process-based. Did the engineers, tools, processes meet the documentation with evidence? So we have to ensure compliance of our data processes. So here we audit the actual implementation, compare it to the plan, standards, keep checklists. The questions we ask, did you, the company, the project, data processing, completely follow your defined, that's written, procedures with your actual work? Did you apply audit checklists? Did you audit all the activities? Not every instance of activity, every category of activity. It's an audit. Audits are a subset. They're not broad. They're deep from start to finish, from receipt of data to transmission. Did you have audit follow-up? When you found defects, and I hope you found them, when we do audits of our client audits and we find that the client had zero defects, that's when we really start the audit. We want to find that the auditor's looking, seeking, and hopefully finding defects. We don't expect perfection. We expect correction of imperfection. So when you had defects, did you revise a procedural framework including checklist, RCA, root cause analysis, to improve that for the next time. Ultimately, can you prove you were innocent instead of guilty of breaching DO 200 or your own plan standards? Note the similarity to CMM level four. Folks, many of you ask us all the time, how do I get more detailed information about quality management processes? How do I really ensure that I am following, okay, DO 200? What are the popular processes, okay? Well, the good news, well, there's good news and bad news. I'll give you the good news. You have that information. It's out there in CMM, okay, Carnegie Mellon Land. Take a class. A Fusion doesn't provide these. Google CMMI training. Take a one or two day class. They have five day. I wouldn't recommend that unless you're really a warrior. But take a one or two day. They do it remotely. CMMI training class. That's where you get the information on how to implement this. Finally, slide 50. Just a few more slides to go. Then we'll take your questions. A few more slides to go. The last thing you want to do, especially for civil certification, and you want to do this, this is your proof to obtain 
that permit of occupancy. That's right, your house, your building had to have a permit of occupancy. This building, this house meets all the requirements according to the government. While the LOA, letter of acceptance for data, is that proof that your data processes meet DO200B, your QMS meets QMS standards, ISO 9X, AS 9115A, and you can prove you followed it, okay? So you need a letter of acceptance. What is that? Well, the LOA, letter of acceptance, acknowledges that you complied to Advisory Circular 2153, acceptance of data processes and associated navigation uh, train databases. Now, AC2153 was for navigation databases only, but the updates include terrain, obstacles, airport maps, it's all important. So if you comply with AC2153B, you may apply for a LOA, letter of acceptance. Now, the LOA identifies that the organization provably demonstrates and meets acceptable processes. There's two types of LOAs. LOA one, you have generic data requirements. In other words, FAA, ESA, the certification authority, they issue acceptance that the definition of the data requirements is acceptable for proposed data usage. But the LOA two is for specified systems. For example, a flight management system. It defines the desired functionality of the equipment that the data is going to meet. So remember, data is not the embedded instruction data of software. So AC2153 doesn't apply to the software programming pins. For example, option selectable software, configuration files, aircraft personality modules, registries, lookup tables. These things are built into the systems, not meant to be changed other than a formal data loading application that's fairly rare. So AC2153B, it doesn't address airborne system data if they're used by an airborne system and approved as part of that type design, okay? For example, think about it. An aircraft has airborne systems that include engine power settings, okay, performance data. Yes, it's data, but it's contained within, certified within the scope of that particular equipment, okay? It's not external. So, there's three types of aeronautical database acceptance, okay? Number one, you can obtain the LOA, type one or two that we were just talking about. This is the common approach, the preferred approach. But guess what? Not the only approach. Number two, you can have a TSOA with an associated database, okay? For example, a TSO that requires DO200A, 200B approval. If you want more information on this, again, this is just a quick one hour high level introduction. You can download the TSO white paper. It's free from the Effusion website. Now, finally, the third choice, you could have installation approval with an associated database, okay? For example, you have some simple data. It's called for on the type certificate or supplemental type certificate for that aircraft system. It's meant for very basic data, data that can be readily assessed, very minimal external uh, relationships. So it wouldn't be allowed, number three, for large or complex data. Now, you've got the letter, congratulations. You've given birth to a beautiful child. Just let them go, right? Oh no, you have parenting responsibilities. We call these letter of approval, LOA, post acceptance responsibilities, okay? That means if you detect an error, you can prove and follow up that you report those errors, okay? Within three days, consider safety, 72 hours. You maintain an official quality management system. You had it from the beginning, you have to maintain it, okay? In other words, you now have the ability to report changes to a certification authority. You submit any design changes, design of your data processing system, to a cert authority. If they're major, that means you can't prove they're minor. Remember, major, minor. Minor is a 
small change that you can prove is localized and assessment of just the focus of the change is acceptable, doesn't affect certification. If you can't prove that and need full regression safety analysis, then it's a major change, okay? If it's a major change you're making to your data processing, transmission tools, it has to be pre-approved. You have audits that at a minimum you perform annually on your data processing activities, everything you do for LOA and DO200 compliance. You notify the certification authority and all users of any instance of actual or suspected DO200B non-compliance, or if your LOA status changes, that means you lose your LOA, you have to notify all users. And then finally, it includes a release statement with every database that you release attesting to the above, okay? Signed by Quality Assurance. So let's take a quick quiz. We're almost done with our high level, way too high, one hour DO200B training. What again are the six integral processes? Well, wait, you've all been capturing screenshots, right? No, because you know Effusion always provides free recordings for our registrants. So you'll get a link to the free recording of this and you can watch it anytime. But without going back, do you remember what the six integral processes were? Yeah, number one, data processing planning. Got to have plans to assess them. Then define data quality requirements, DQRs. Do they meet your plan? Number three, the data processing itself. What processing do you use after you receive all the way through transmission? How do you manage data quality? How do you ensure compliance? And do you need an LOA? What kind of LOA? How do you get it? How do you maintain it? Those are the six key processes, okay? So let's summarize with some really important principles. Number one, Effusion does many, many DO200 audit supports qualifications. We find that what gets planned gets done. So make sure you have detailed plans and proof that you follow them. Testing does not increase quality. Oh yes, you heard that right. Testing does not increase quality. Testing assesses quality. Quality doesn't come from testing. Quality comes from upfront planning. Testing assesses, do you meet the DQRs, data quality requirements? Assumptions, the number one cause of software errors is assumptions. So the goal of the DOs, DO160, DO170, DO, 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 is to minimize assumptions to an acceptable level for the criticality of that item. So avoid assumptions by having specific written documentation with independent reviews of the documentation and the compliance to the documentation. Don't make huge documents. No one wants to read it. It won't be valid for long. It'll be changed. Enough detail that everyone can follow it consistently. Number four, you're all guilty until you prove yourself innocent. Cost is pragmatic. If you're level two data, okay, assurance level, you get no extra credit for being better, okay, level one. So do the minimum for the level that you need to achieve. Number six, eliminate all weak links by having plans for all the objectives of DO. And remember, QA is responsible for compliance. QA must be proactive. They're like a friendly policeman, a friendly parent, not grandpa, grandma, Uncle Joe that occasionally pat you on the back. QA is the parent, the policeman in the car with you, giving proactive, provable advice. Follow those seven rules and you'll be well on your way to DO 200 compliance. Okay? So now, if you're still with us, what is the optimal DO200B engineering route? Well, let's take a look. This is a Fusion's diff whoopsie. This is a Fusion's opinion of the optimal route. Number one, safety assessments. Determine the assurance level of your data. Start that QA process. Establish the data requirements. Then develop your plans, audits, checklists. Develop traceability 
of the processes, implement CM, and then audit. Do you have all of these in place provably? That's your planning process. Then you have processes for receiving data from your supplier. Your data processing requirements meeting the QMS that was defined up here. You validate the data and the process. You finish the data. And meanwhile, all along, you've been verifying, assessing, have you met by reviews, tests, inspections, the defined criteria? So you audit your processes. You audit the test of those processes and data quality. And then a final audit, you're ready to transmit the data to the end user. So this is our opinion of the optimal route, okay? Well, folks, you made it. And oh my goodness, one minute to spare. What do you call an aviation requirement of one minute to spare, just in time delivery? If you want more DO200B information, Fusion does private two-day training. Of course, these days we do a lot of that remotely. Just look us up. If you'd like free monthly webinars, if you like this webinar, this one was not advertised outside of the Effusion uh, group. So just join, follow Effusion on LinkedIn, then you'll get the private announcements. Sometimes we have extra room and we release it to the general world. But if you're here, it's because you follow Effusion or you're one of our clients. And if you want more information, we're, ma we're managers of the world's largest aviation software user group. There's hundreds of technical threads and free technical information for that. Okay, so, oh my, we have got half a dozen, oh, nine questions. We are out of time. We'll reply to each with the email separately. Okay, so everyone, thank you for coming. Good luck, good success, good planning on your data quality requirements. Bye-bye.